Hi, I'm Bob. Today I will continue to do the problems from 7 to 12. They are from Chapter 3, the Multiple Regression Analysis in the textbook Introductory Econometrics of Modern Approach, the 7th edition. Let's go to problem number 7. For the first question, heteroscedasticity does not cause ORS estimators to be biased. As long as the error term is not correlated with the explanatory variables, the ORS estimators will be unbiased. It has nothing to do with the variance of the error term. If the error term has the same variance given any value of x, the OLS estimator is the most efficient estimator among all the unbiased estimators. That means the OLS estimator has the smallest variance among all the linear unbiased estimators. We call it the best linear unbiased estimator, blue. Heteroscedasticity does not cause the ORS estimator to be biased. However, it no longer has the smallest variance among all the linear unbiased estimators in the presence of heteroscedasticity. There could be other linear unbiased estimators that are more efficient. In the case of omitting an important variable from the model, the OLS estimators are biased. Please check the video of Introductory Econometrics number 10, where we derived the omitted variable bias and determined the direction of the bias. In the third situation, the OLS estimators are still unbiased when two explanatory variables are highly correlated as long as the error term is uncorrelated with the explanatory variables. The high correlation between explanatory variables leads to a large variance in the OLS estimators. Look at the estimator's variance formula the R squared is close to 1 in this case, and therefore the variance is large. Let's do the ACE problem. We have derived the omitted variable bias in video 10. The bias depends on beta 2 and the covariance or correlation between x1 and x2. In this problem, beta 2 is positive, and the correlation between x1 and x2 is negative, so the bias is negative. It is a downward bias. The trailing effect on productivity is underestimated. Let's go to the nice problem. The sign of beta 1 should be negative. More pollution lowers the housing price. The sign of beta 2 should be positive. More rooms in the house increase the value of the house. It is the elasticity when the outcome variable and the expenditure variable are both in the log term. Beta 1 is the percentage change in the median housing price as pollution increases by 1%. For the second question, usually rich people are not willing to buy houses in a place with a lot of pollution. Rich people are property developers. 
tend to build homes with more rooms. So the number of rooms might be negatively correlated with the pollution level. If this is the case, the simple regression of log price on log nitrous oxide produces a downward biased estimator of beta 1. To see why, we can write the estimated equation. Following the method we used in video number 10, the expectation of beta 1 equals beta 1 plus the omitted variable bias. Because beta 2 is positive, and the correlation between pollution and the number of rooms is negative, the bias will be negative. It is a downward bias. Since beta 1 is negative, the OLS estimate will be more negative. In other words, the negative pollution effect on the housing price is overstated. In the third question, we see that the regression estimates of the elasticity of price with respect to nitrous oxide have the predicted relationship. The estimate from simple regression is more negative than the estimate from multiple regression. But it doesn't mean the minus 0.718 is definitely closer to the true elasticity because there could be other omitted variables in the model. Location is an important determinant of the median housing price. For example, if the house is located in the city centre, it will be more expensive than the house in a rural area. If the city centre is more polluted than the rural area, then locating in the city centre is positively correlated with pollution. So the bias is positive and the estimate is upper biased. That implies that the pollution effect is understated. Then the minus 1.043 might be closer to the true value. Here's the tenth problem. To estimate the Ceteris Paribus relationship between y and x1, we collect data on two control variables, x2 and x3. Running the multiple regression model gives the OLS estimate beta 1 hat. Suppose the simple regression of y on x1 gives the estimator beta 1 tilde. The following four questions compare the expectation of the estimators and their standard errors. We can treat x2 and x3 as one variable z. Then we can write down the expectation of the estimators. Assume that beta 1 hat is unbiased and its expectation is beta 1. Beta 1 tilde comes from the simple regression and suffers from omitted variable bias. The bias is alpha times the sample covariance between x1 and z over the sample variance of x1. For the first question, x1 is highly correlated with x2 and x3, which means the covariance between x1 and z is large. x2 and x3 have large partial effects on y, means alpha is large, so the bias is large. Beta 1 tilde and beta 1 hat is very different.
The second question, x1 is almost uncorrelated with x2 and x3, which means the sample covariance between x1 and z is small. x2 and x3 are highly correlated, which should not affect the size of the bias. So the bias is small. The expectation of beta 1 hat is approximately equal to the expectation of beta 1 tilde, which means beta 1 tilde and beta 1 hat tend to be similar. For the last two questions, we write down the variance of beta 1 hat and the variance of beta 1 tilde. Notice that when we calculate the standard error of the estimators, sigma hat is computed using the sample residuals. For the third question, if x1 is highly correlated with x2 and x3, the r squared 1 is close to 1. The variance of beta 1 hat will be much larger than the variance of beta 1 tilde. So the standard error of beta 1 tilde is smaller than the standard error of beta 1 hat. For the last question, if x1 is almost uncorrelated with x2 and x3, the r squared 1 will be close to 0 because it is from the regression of x1 on x2 and x3. x2 and x3 having large partial effects on y implies that the total sum of squares of residuals reduced substantially in the multiple regression model. Since the sigma hat is much smaller from the multiple regression than that from the simple regression model, the standard error of the beta 1 hat is smaller than the standard error of the beta 1 tilde. The correlation between x2 and x3 will not directly affect the standard error of beta 1 hat. Let's complete the problem number 11. The population model has three explanatory variables, x1, x2, and x3. The estimated model omits x3 and attains the OLS estimator beta 1 tilde for beta 1. We use the formula for multiple regression models. Beta 1 tilde is a function of the outcome variable y and the residuals r1 hat. The residuals r1 hat come from the simple regression of x1 on x2, that is the part of x1 after the effect of x2 has been parceled out. We plug in the y variable in terms of x1, x2, x3, and the error term mu. We have five terms in the numerator. We call that in the simple regression of x1 on x2, the sum of residuals r1 hat is zero. The sample covariance between the regressor x2 and the residuals r1 hat is zero. The sample covariance between the outcome variable x1 and the residuals r1 hat is the sample variance of the residuals. These properties simplify the numerator into three terms. Because the error term in the population model mu is uncorrelated with x, 
the expected value of the last term is zero. Finally, we obtain the expected value of beta 1 tilde in the presence of an omitted variable x3. Let's do problem number 12. Look at the first question. We omit one of the text share variables to avoid perfect collinearity. The four shares add up to one. Any one share variable can be written as a linear function of the other three. The second question is about the Ceteris Paribus effect of the share of property taxes on employment. Beta 1 measures the percentage change in the employment rate due to a one unit increase in the share of property taxes in total tax revenue, holding all other factors fixed. Because the tax share is a fraction from 0 to 1, a natural interpretation could be as the property tax share increases by one percentage point, the employment rate changes by beta 1 times 0.01% on average, other things equal. Thank you very much for completing the problems with me. See you. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.